What are some things that you know you've changed your mind about in during your lifting career, or things that were paradigm shattering for yeah. you? Biggest one, hundred percent conditioning, conditioning cardiovascular work. Oh. Again, like growing up, I was a bodybuilder, and cardio is seen as a way to lose fat. Mm -hmm. And I lost a lot of fat doing a lot of cardio. Like I, my, for my first bodybuilding show, I had to drop about um, about 45, 50 pounds of fat, yeah. and it was done, in my opinion, through like it's calorie deficit. But my mech, the way that I implemented it was doing like three hours, four hours of cardio a day. Oh my God. <laughs> like Every not, day? Not from day one, yeah. but it was, it yeah. started out, you know, 30 minutes a day. And then it went to 40 minutes a day. Yeah. And then, okay, an hour is kind of boring. Let's do, let's do an hour in the morning and let's do maybe 20 minutes at night. And then it went, it got to three hours, wow. four hours. It, it, it was not good. Somehow I balanced uni and working as a PT and my actual weight training in between. <laughs> I, d I don't know how. how? I, don't, I, I don't know how. Like, Man, you, you know, must hold on to muscle really well. Because I, I, I did I not. Would, I lost uh, a lot of muscle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never mind. Was not very successful. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, yeah, I lost, I lost all my muscle. <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's a catch there. Um, but yeah, in my head, like cardio is for fat loss. Yeah. In the off season, when you're trying to build muscle, you're trying to build strength, you don't do cardio. Yeah. You don't do conditioning because it's going to, Take, decrease your gains and then I started um, learning a lot more about conditioning and cardio and obviously the fact is like hey cardio is about not eliciting a calorie deficit it's not about energy burn it's not about fat loss it's literally about training your cardiovascular system oh, beautiful. your heart your blood vessels your lungs yes. and that has applications for muscle building like if you take all of us right now, let's say we want to put on as much muscle as we can. Like we want to get fucking jacked. I want to put on 30 pounds in the next 30 days, okay? Right. Apart from steroids. <laughs> um, D-ball. Yeah, like that, that's that's the protocol, right? Yeah, We're going to yeah. use a lot of Anadrol yeah. and D-ball. Give me that's 30 days, dude. Yeah. 30 days. Yeah, and burgers. Um, yeah. If we can, we all have our idea of what the program or the anabolic stack or whatever would be that would help us out. But if you took all of us and put us through the exact same protocol of all those drugs and all those training, we'll get a response. But if we took our exact identical twin, but that person had a better VO2 max, a more intricate capillary network, or more robust heart, lung, blood vessel, all that kind of cardiovascular system, if you took that person and put the exact same protocol on them, they'll probably put on 60 pounds, not 30 pounds. Yeah, I, I love what you just said because my issue or our issue with cardio is making that the fundamental way that you try to lose body fat, which we've mm. talked about many times is really not a really the good long- calorie burn. Yeah, yeah it's not only, a really good long-term yeah. approach. And, and, and the, the, if I really get boil down the root of what annoys me about that is that we value, or I should say the mainstream, values exercise based off of its calorie burn. This is how we've yeah. ranked exercise for so long. Oh, we got to burn more calories. What's the best form of exercise? The one that burns the most calories, which is terrible because we ignore the most important thing about exercise, which are the adaptations, which is what mm -hmm. you're talking about. Yeah. And I agree 100% with you. Um, when I have better stamina, I can lift weights better. Yeah. When my stamina is crap, I can't lift weights that great. Like you yeah. try to do a set of 20 reps of squats, which is great for building the legs mm -hmm. with poor stamina. Mm -hmm. You're dead. You can't do yeah. it. <laughs> so I, I completely agree with you. So yeah. 100%. What are your favorite forms of conditioning? Do you just steady state or do you like hit or like it, for- Yeah, it varies. So, I mean, there's there's so many layers to how you can program conditioning. People normally think of it as hit or this, and they think of it as- being on a treadmill or maybe mix it up and go into a spin bike or maybe mix it up and go into mm -hmm. an air bike or a rower. But really conditioning can also be how you perform your weights. Like there's no, like we, yeah. we identify conditioning by its exercise choice of running right. or jogging or cardio exercises, but conditioning should be um, determined based upon the work to rest interval, <coughs> the duration and the overall intensity that yeah. you use. And because of that, you can use any exercise. You know, you can use deadlifts, you can use an overhead squat or whatever. So it really comes down to um, yeah, how you apply the exercises. So that will then become individual dependent. What I personally will do will be based upon how it fits into what else I'm currently doing. Mm. So when it comes to programming for conditioning, the um, the first thing I want to ask is, do I want to be, am I focusing on this particular session? Am I focusing on aerobic conditioning or anaerobic conditioning? Because they're slightly different things in yeah. terms of the overall duration of it. And that will then determine, okay, how long is it going to be? And what's the relative intensity? That will then determine what exercises are going to make the most sense. Like if I'm doing a um, um, an all out anaerobic 20 second burst, like 20 seconds on and a minute off for like 10 sets that's going to have a very specific anaerobic conditioning stimulus on my body. It's also going to predicate me towards certain exercises where maybe something like more plyometric based exercises are a really bad choice because I'm going to be very sore. Yeah. There's higher injury risk. It's going to damage my ability to be able to do higher frequencies of that to create more adaptations. Um, 
So, and then when will I, why would I do that over doing more of a steady state long duration? It may be because I need to improve my max power output and my ability to handle things like lactate, my hand, my ability to handle myself working at a maximal intensity under fatigue conditions. That's a very different adaptation to what I'm going to get from the zone two cardio. The right. low intensity stuff is going to work more on the mitochondrial side of things, it's going to work more on the, um, just the overall blood flow and the stroke volume, the, the heart side of things, the adaptations there. So I think the the mistake people make is they they argue between hit or list. Hit you're gonna get the afterburn. List you're gonna get the yeah. the lower intensity. But you, the reality is you need both, and they support each other. They're gonna help each other. So we should be doing plenty of both styles of training. You can't just do list, even though it helps if you're it's gonna help you for recovery. It's going to over time not let you learn how to push hard under a fatigue state at a maximal intensity at a max heart rate. You can only get that from doing true anaerobic intervals. And you can't even get that from doing weightlifting. You can't get that from a, even a hard set of like a true grinder, 15 rep set of squats. You're not gonna practically be able to do that enough to be able to get the anaerobic stimulus that you need from just doing a few hard sets in the gym. Because technically speaking, I could do a 20 second all out burst, one minute off, 10 sets, that's gonna give me the anaerobic benefits of training under fatigue conditions. I could do the same thing on a squats. I could do a 20 rep set of squats. That might take me 20, 30 seconds. My eyeballs will be bursting out. I could take a minute rest, do it again. The issue there is as I do more sets to accumulate the required volume to create the adaptation for conditioning for the anaerobic stimulus, it's dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> It's yeah. dangerous, it's impractical. Yeah. So eventually, whether you like it or not, we all should be doing some um, cardio work that is probably gonna be on a cardio-based machine in the anaerobic threshold and also in that low intensity threshold to supplement and support our weightlifting. Because you can't get the same adaptations across all these different things from the one implement. And that's what we should be looking at. Yeah. How much of that are you programming in a week typically? Yeah. You know, a generic um, answer, obviously. So um, if, if I really wanna drive up the adaptations to improve the, the benefits for recovery in a certain cycle of training for myself right now, it would be, Every day I'll be doing some kind of conditioning, whether it's anaerobic or aerobic. I might usually flip flop between, this, yeah. between the two, so maybe three days of each a week. Um, my weight training will will take a back seat. Mm. I might only train twice a week for doing like pure strength work because I can't handle all the extra cardio work I'm doing. But it's okay because train train two days a week. Are you going to lose muscle mass? Such, no. a, such a good point yeah. that you just did. You yeah. just said that right there because yeah, I think everybody the mistake, just adds. Yeah, the ad. that's the Don't mistake add. that I think yeah. most people would make, and then they end up losing losing muscle because of how much they're they're throwing. For sure, yeah, for sure. But it's like, well, what's what's my main priority right now? My main priority right now is to drive the cardiovascular adaptations. I need to do aerobic and anaerobic stuff. I need to do it probably most days because it doesn't take a lot of soreness, doesn't take a lot of recovery from us. I'll do it every single day, but. Neurologically, I maybe probably can't perform as much in my weight sessions. I'll do less there. But again, realistically, mechanistically, am I going to lose a lot of strength and muscle mass training twice a week with weights? I'm not. No. It's going to, at absolute worst, it might come down 10%, yeah, which but would, it'll come back right, overnight. Right, right, yeah, right. that's the beauty of strength training is that you you such a small amount is required to maintain what you mm. built versus mm. what you did. Yeah. Not necessarily true with other forms of exercise. I know with cardiovascular exercise, the, the more, I mean, obviously the, mm. you can't keep doing this, but the more, the better. Strength training is really interesting. Like, uh, especially I've been working out for so long now that I can keep muscle really easy. Like if yeah. I just worked out twice a week, yeah. I wouldn't get any, I wouldn't lose any muscle or strength, uh, mm. but I wouldn't have built any with yeah. just, you know, or get to this point, uh, which is two days a week. So yeah. it's really interesting. Yeah. And uh, the cardio is interesting as well because it, it is kind of similar where once you spend like a good four, eight, maybe 12 week block of doing this dedicated conditioning style work, you've created changes to your heart. Like your left ventricle has grown. You've, 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 you've created more blood vessels. You've, you've changed your body on a, uh, on a cellular level. That's not going to change overnight either. Like yeah. you, once I've done that block of say, even just four weeks of doing a lot of conditioning, I'll probably come back to just two sessions a week. Like I'll do one extended, like one hour, 90 minute session mm -hmm. and I'll do one 15 minute anaerobic session and that'll be enough to maintain and then I can ramp up the weight training and it'll maintain for a while, but eventually there is gonna be slow diminishing returns, slow diminishing benefits to it and then I'll need to ramp it back up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like we know for all of us training two days a week with weights is enough to maintain, but for how long? Yeah. If, we, if we trained just two days a week for the next five years, we're definitely going to be a bit smaller, a bit weaker every yeah, time. Sure. Yeah, sure. So we've got to find. Take a while. Yeah, we've got to find where is that point where, <clears throat> what's the minimum effective dose of cardio that I can do to maintain where I'm currently at, and then when I see it decreasing as well, I need to add more back in again. It's always ebb and flow, push and pull. So good. That's, that's programming yeah. though.